and Song of Solomon. Okay, this is going to be a two-parter. I was going to try to cram it in uh, in a short time, but uh, this is going to be on physical health or biblical health. Uh, the Bible covers all areas of life. A lot of people look at it just as a spiritual or religious book, but the Bible helps a person mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And it's got ideas on uh, physical health, okay, how to take care of your physical body and how to be a good steward. So I'll basically I just want to kind of get your curiosity going today to begin uh, a pattern of life of studying physical health until the day you die. Okay, I mean, any area, Jan and I have been a part of anything, we're going to look at, search, try, and see what works, what doesn't work. And we intend to do that until we're dead, you know, or the rapture. So that I'd prefer the second. But Genesis 129, here's where it all started. I want to show you some things about it. So just to kind of get our curiosity thinking about things. Genesis 126, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So that's all the creeps that you know. He's even got dominion over the creeps. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, okay, here's what Adam ate. Adam and Eve ate. Behold, I have given unto you every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree, yielding seed to you it shall be for meat." And when we think meat, we think, you know, Big Mac, Whopper, whatnot, Hamburg. Meat here is defined to be fruit and nuts. Okay, we'll get uh, to the idea of that. Okay, and then it says, And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So all the animals ate the same fashion. This is before the fall. And God said everything, and God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good, and evening and morning were the sixth day. Okay, now if you would try Song of Solomon. Songs, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Don't hear much about Song of Solomon. Chapter 5 gives a physical description of Jesus Christ. It's like a Kodak moment if you want to know what He looked like. Chapter 5 gives that. Chapter 4. He describes, uh, doctrinally, he describes uh, the church, okay, and here's how he describes the church, the, the bride. Song of Solomon 4, verse 10. How fair is my love, my sister, my spouse? How much better is thy love than wine? And the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Thy lips, O oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. Okay, that, that, Lebanon is known for cedar trees. It's like a cedar chest. A garden enclosed of my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. So it's a greenhouse. Smell of a greenhouse. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, campfire, spike nard. Spike, nard, and saffron, calamus, and cinnamon. So they're herbs and spices. Uh, if you've got ants, try throwing cinnamon down. They don't like cinnamon. With all the trees of frankincense, myrrh, and aloes. Many of you know what the aloes plant is good for, for burns. Honey does the same thing. I like honey better because it tastes better. You can lick it off yourself. So aloes with all the chief spices. A fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, that's unusual, living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, and come thou south. Blow upon my garden that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. That's his description. Now, if you go two chapters later, chapter 6, verse 11, or verse 11, Here's where the Bible um, puts 
where the protein is a vegetable protein or a plant protein. Uh, Song of Solomon 6, verse 11. I went down into the garden of nuts and found a bunch of Baptists there. <laughs> okay, well, no. I went down to, into the garden of nuts to see the fruits of the valley and to see whether the vine flourished and the pomegranates budded. So it's just giving an association there. So if you would, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I do pray and ask that you'd help each and every one of us. It's not a revival meeting or anything, but Lord, I just pray that you'd help each and every one of us to uh, consider and thoughtfully consider what we put in each of our bodies. Help us to realize that I am responsible for this body to be a good steward of it, that uh, what I put into it can be a benefit or it can be a hurt or a uh, hindrance. I pray you'd help us to understand these ideas in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I just want to give you some places in the Bible. You'd be surprised what some of the things the Bible says. Uh, if you look at it more than what most people look at it. And so I just kind of want to spark your curiosity this morning that you begin to consider and research some things. Next week, I kind of get some seven general areas of health and just kind of run through those ideas. Uh, things that Jan and I have been working on for many, many years, practicing, experiencing, studying, continue to study. Uh, and will continue because uh, I believe that I need to be a good steward of this body God's given me. I can't go to an auto or human parts store and try to get new parts from somebody else. If I do, well, then I have to take this um, medication because your body wants to throw that out. But that, that's a whole different idea. And so all I want to do is try to get you to consider and begin to research about proper nutrition from your body. Cautiously and thoughtfully choose what you put in your mouth. Now, nobody has a perfect diet, so we won't even go there. Nobody's got a perfect diet. Nobody is perfectly in control of their fleshly appetite. So we'll just get that taken care of. Don't worry about that. Am I perfect? No, of course not. I like my potato chips like a lot of people, okay? And so none of us are perfect about these things, but we need to at least grow in it and try to study it. I do know that the spiritual body is more important than the physical body. God looks at that that way too. The spiritual, spiritual body is in priority over the physical body, but both are inseparable until death. And a person can study, begin to study, and make slow changes in your own personal life. Don't be quick on a lot of these things. Make slow changes, be thoroughly in your study, in 1 Kings chapter 19, if you look at Elijah, what a fella. Elijah stood against an entire nation by himself, and 850 false prophets lost the battle with Elijah. It was an unfair contest because Elijah had God on his side, and the 850 died that day. But the next chapter, Elijah got depressed, and one woman scared him. How can it go from 850 false prophets plus the entire nation and one woman scared him in the next chapter? And when he went and hid in these woods, God came amongst him, an angel came amongst him and said, you know what you need? You need to rest. You need to eat some things. You need to drink some of this stuff. You need, he, he, his problem was he was physically drained. And it hurt him spiritually. There are some spiritual problems that you might have might be caused by a physical problem, might be caused by a mental problem or an emotional problem. There can be a physical problem that is caused by a spiritual problem. Okay, and so because we are amazingly put together, they call it psychosomatic, where each and every one of us are created where our emotions and we're mental and spiritual and physical and it's all interwoven. And so a person needs to try to learn some of these things. Now, God created Adam, a healthy man, in a healthy environment. Why? To fellowship with God. That's our priority. To fellowship with God. Before the fall, Adam was a fruititarian. Some would say fruititarian. Some would say fruiterian. In other words... Only thing he ate was fruit and nuts. Okay? Nuts refer to vegetable protein of whatnot. After the fall, God added vegetables to his diet and other plants. So it's like potatoes and carrots, things grown under the ground. After the fall, that was added. 
He didn't bring home the bacon. Adam never brought home the bacon. Okay, the bacon wasn't brought home until after the flood with Noah, and that's when, at least the record of the Bible says, when he, God said, okay, you can go ahead and have that hamburger. Okay, and so that's when the meat idea came in. So that was about 1,700 years from Adam until if anybody before the flood ate meat, I have no idea. They probably gave it a shot, but who knows. But in the Bible, that's when God allowed Noah to start eating the meat. Okay, and then when God made a proposal with Israel, he said, I want you to be a select people. I want you to be quite an example. And so he said to them, no pork burgers, no lobster, no uh, shrimp. They had to kick out all the scavengers. So that's Leviticus chapter 11. So actually what a person is doing, people often make fun of vegetarians, and I think they're humorous at times too, and I'm not a vegetarian. But still the idea is that when somebody eats uh, hamburg, try eating hamburger steak without zero vegetable spices, no ketchup, no mustard. Kick out all plant products and try to eat the meat by itself. It ain't real good. What gives it the... Taste is the plant products. Okay, but, and when you're eating a cow, you're eating a vegetarian type animal, so you're a vegetarian second hand. In actuality, and if you're eating a scavenger, you're eating a vegetarian third hand. Because they eat the dead other stuff. And, and, you know, I don't want to ruin your ham sandwich, but go raise a hog and see what they eat. <laughs> Now, chickens aren't much better, okay? But still the idea, I just want you to consider some things about this idea. Okay, Eve was deceived. What did she do? She put something in her mouth that she should not have. Okay, Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. It appeared good, looked good, but she put, and man has had that problem ever since. Putting something in his mouth that he shouldn't put in his mouth. Now, man traveled, his lifespan traveled from 900 years old down to Abraham was 175, Isaac and Esau was 130s, uh, down to Moses was 120, and then people say 70 and 80, that's people under judgment, and then if you go into the tribal cultures where they're eating bats and mice and all these other things, their lifespan's no more than 40, so when they're in their teenage years, they're over the hill. And a lot of that is because of the things they put in their body. Now, a person can study. You have a lot of advantages. The Internet is a wonderful thing if you use it properly, but you have a lot of things that you can learn very quickly. You don't have to waste a lot of time with it. But there was a China study in China, a 20-year study. I'm glad I didn't have to make the study. And they studied Chinese people who ate the American diet versus Chinese who ate the poor diet of rice and vegetables and all that stuff. And the Chinese that ate the American diet had the same diseases Americans have. And the Chinese that ate the rice and and uh, and the vegetables that's not fully cooked, you know, a lot of times you find that, which is probably better. And uh, they didn't have the diseases the other Chinese had. That's a 20-year study. There's another study put out by a guy named Pottinger, and, and he did a cat study. He studied three groups of cats. And he fed them the identical food. Only one group, he cooked the food, the cooked the meat. The other group, it was raw meat. And then the third group, he, he gave them cooked meat. And then he switched to raw meat. And then he studied the first generation, second generation, third generation. And the differences was phenomenal. That was just the thing that he studied. Or you can uh, travel around and try to study some things. Now, doctors, medical doctors, I don't know what they're, uh, how much they got to go through school. Probably seven years at least or whatever. And they'll have about two classes on nutrition in seven years. They know nothing about nutrition. Just put anything in your mouth. They don't care. It makes their life, you know, they make you go golf and live pretty high in a hog. And in Mark Mark chapter 5, verse 26, there was a woman in the day of Jesus Christ that suffered many years. She went to many physicians. She suffered many things of many physicians and was nothing better. Do you know anybody like that? Why? That's why they call it practicing medicine. I'm not saying don't go to that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying educate yourself and study. Okay, so we need to study about some things. Okay, and one study was a fellow by the name of John Robbins. He did a study, and the Natural Geographic several years ago did a 
uh, had an article of three places in the world where there are multitudes of sanitarians. They live over 100 years old, and these people are productive people. They are working. They are self-independent type people. One place was in the Hunzas, and they said the Hunzas... Uh, were surpassed in perfection of physique and in freedom from disease in a general uh, with the span of life extraordinary to long. Another place was in, southern, in the Caucasus Mountains of southern Russia, where they have a bunch of people that live to be 100 years old. And then in a third place at that time was uh, southern Ecuador. Where they have a bunch, of, and then they studied their diet, they studied their life pattern, they studied some things about it. Possibly that was something that caused, helped these people live a long life. A fellow named John Robbins, he was the heir of Baskin Robbins. His uncle was the name, his uncle Baskin, Bert Baskin, okay, and then his dad, Irv Robbins, they started this company, Baskin Robbins. And uh, his uncle died of a heart attack at 54. And John Robbins didn't uh, want to be a part of the... He, did, he rejected being an heir of it because he did not think that... He felt he, it bothered his conscience that they were giving a product that was harming people. And so he wrote a book called The Diet for a New America. Now, he's kind of optimistic. No, it ain't going to be the diet of a new America. But it was a very health-type diet. Gave a book to his dad. His dad laughed and scoffed at it. And they kind of, they had broken fellowship for a while. And, And then his dad developed heart disease and diabetes. And his heart doctor, the cardiologist, amazingly, said, well, we can give you these medications and try to make your life at ease. But he said, I would suggest you to read this book. And he gave him his son's book, A Diet for New America. He didn't know that that was his son. And it was amazing, he gave that to him, so his dad took it and read it. Changed his diet and lived to be 91. Overcame the heart issues, overcame the diabetes. So that says something. In Okinawa, Japan boasts of 900 people over 100 years old and up, the highest number of verified sanitarians in the world. There's a fellow named Stamatitis Stamatis of uh, of, um, an island off of Greece. He immigrated to the United States, and then he got diagnosed with lung cancer in the 60s. And his doctor said, you got less than a year to live. So he decided, well, I'll go back home. I'd just rather die at home. So I went back home, and of course he started eating the diets of that community. He was in his 60s. He did not do chemotherapy, no treatment. And he lived to be 102. Ten years after the fact, he thought, I'm going to go back to America and ask the doctors why I got better. But he couldn't find the doctors because they were all dead. And so that's kind of an interesting story. And a person, what a person could do is study these areas and discover maybe they, maybe their pattern of eating or lifestyle, it's not just eating, it's exercise, a lot of things involved, maybe that can be beneficial. One, one of the first fellows I started reading was a guy named Norman Walker. He was kind of a pioneer of the health industry without any new age philosophy, and he kind of introduced the idea of uh, carrot juice and so forth. The youngest age I can find for him being uh, dying was 99, but it ranges anywhere from 99 to 119, so I can't really nail it down how old this guy lived. But 99 is not bad. Uh, another fellow I studied a lot was Paul Bragg, a fellow named Paul Bragg. He did a lot of uh, studies on fasting. Paul Bragg was, I think, about in his 80s. He did a 30-day fast. It was with distilled water. And he wanted to go on a 30-mile hike, so he hired some college uh, boys, young men, college boys, and he said, I want to take you guys, and you guys can eat anything you want, and I'd like to take this 30-mile hike if you can keep up with me. This was after a 30-day fast, still drinking his water, and so the college guys get on a hike with him, and he had to finish the hike by himself. Paul Bragg uh, died at 94. He was surfing down at uh, Hawaii on one of the beach, hit his head on a coral, and then died. Uh, but he was very uh, obviously health conscious. There's another fe- fellow named George Malkmus. I took two day class with George Malkmus. 
He, uh, his mother was a nurse. She got colon cancer at 59. She had taught him that every time you get sick, make sure you go to the doctor and everything. So she went to the doctor, got colon cancer, and died 65 years old and uh, was pretty rough six years. And at about 42, he got colon cancer, had a tumor of about the size of a baseball. Talked to Lester Roloff, and Brother Roloff said, why don't you try carrot juicing? Changed his diet, went and ate nothing but raw fruit and vegetables for one year, and every ailment he had in life went away. He's 84 today. And so those are just some people that I've studied personally. Uh, Ned was a fellow in um, Australia. We know Ned. He's a former rugby player. La uh, not the last time. I think it was the last time or the time before we were out there. He talked about his eczema that he had. I think it was the last time. Maybe it was the last time we were out there. And we said, would you be willing to try something? He said, I'll try anything. Nothing's working for me. And so we said, how about juicing? So we go to the grocery store and we buy over a hundred bucks worth of produce and we just start juicing and put in a big thing for Ned. And I wouldn't do it the technique Ned did it, but he would take these bottles that big and he had about 14 of them, freeze 13, take the next one to the work next day. And that's all he would drink at work. Six, three, 250 pounds. I'd hate to tell him what his weight is. I don't know what it is. Big guy. And his eczema went away. He was pretty happy. He was pretty happy about that. He's still juicing uh, to a point. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it says, Whether therefore you eat or drink, do all for the glory of God. Now, that's my purpose. Not just to be a health nut, but the purpose is to be a glory to God. In, second, in 3 John, it's a very short letter in the back of the Bible, John mentioned this statement. He said this, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Now, I, I, my goal is that we're healthy spiritually and physically and mentally and emotionally, and all that comes from the Bible. But yet we have a responsibility. Now, don't get me wrong, God does allow physical ailments at times, and there's no cause for it, meaning it's not that guy's fault, it just happens, and God has an intention to reward in eternity because God places the spiritual above the physical, and many missionaries that go to foreign cultures know that if they go to Africa, they're going to get malaria. So they are sacrificing their physical health for a spiritual benefit of others, and you've got to admire that. When you go into other cultures, they have parasites that we are different than our parasites. We're used to our parasites. We're not used to their parasites. And so that's why a lot of times you've got to be careful what you eat in other places. Okay, but still the idea. Now, the Apostle Paul, wonderful great Christian, talked about his many infirmities. Why? Mission work. He's going everywhere. And so that's one thing we want to consider. God will at times sacrifice the physical for a spiritual benefit. I think Jesus Christ did that on Calvary. 33 years old, he sacrificed his physical body for the spiritual. So there are times that that does take place. Now the health food proponents, they usually ignore the true spirituality of God. They ignore the Bible. The Christians ignore the science of health. Now, obviously, if I'm going to ignore one of the two, it would be better to do that part than to ignore the Bible. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 talks about the Word of God. And it says, with the Word of God, you get long life. And Proverbs 3, verse 8 says that the Word of God brings health to your navel and marrow to your bones. There's a health technique that you can place a supplement on your navel and tell if your body needs that by the navel because that's how we originally got fed in the womb. It's a very interesting health technique. But not only does health or physical things, what you eat, uh, affect your outlook of life, your attitude does. Proverbs says three times, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. A person can put good things in their body, but if they're depressed or if they are got bitterness or anything like that or holding grudges, that affects them spiritually and physically. Norman Cousins is a fellow that can, uh, got cancer, 
And he thought, well, if I got cancer, I'm going to go out laughing. So he just started renting a bunch of videos of comedies and everything. And he just laughed and laughed and laughed himself. And he laughed himself till he got cured. Okay? A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So uh, it does, our outlook, our social uh, relationships with people does affect us mentally, spiritually, and physically. Now, if you would go back to, go to Genesis 3, I want to show you a technique the food industry has perfected. Nothing has changed. This has not changed since Genesis chapter 3. Why did Eve eat that fruit? What, who was the appetizer? The guy advertising was a very debonair devil that looked like a man. Okay, so the food industry has perfected this. Genesis 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Why'd she eat it? It looked good. The food industry knows that we buy products by appearance. This is why the apples in the grocery store are shiny. There's a wax on there to make them shiny. Go to an orchard, you won't see that. It's a wax. Put it in peroxide, you'll see the white come off it. That's why oranges are sold in orange bags. That's why lemons are sold in yellow bags. That's why you'll buy baby carrots before you buy regular carrots. And the baby carrots have been washed with a uh, chlorinated water. Why? We buy by appearance. And then when you walk out of the non-food section, that's the produce section, or walk out of the produce section, that's the food section, into the non-food section, that's where all the shelves are. And if you look at the, the boxes, they will advertise colorful things and they will put words on there to draw your attention to them because we buy things by our sight. And if we don't read, begin... This is what I want to get across. Begin to read the ingredients. It's right there in front of us. And what's first on the list is the number one thing of that product, then two, then three, then four, then five. And go to a grocery store and just start picking things off. Just, oh, high fructose corn syrup, number two. Oh, high fructose corn syrup, number three. Oh, why do they put that in there? Because it's pretty poor quality food. Okay, and just discover, why, why is this taking place? Okay, the, the scheme, this scheme of buying products by appearance has been perfected by the industries. They know that colors emit vibrations that tickle your palate. They know that. And they know what words to put on there to draw people in. Okay, and so the processed products will have colorful pictures that have words like natural, fruit, no artificial flavors, non-GMO, healthy, sugar-free, no preservatives added. What are preservatives? It's a form of formaldehyde. So you're getting a, a, a jump on the mortician. You know, instead of waiting and then getting pumped in, Let's, let's get slow process here. <laughs> if you read the ingredients, high fructose corn syrup will be number two or three on most of the products. I mean, it's almost a conspiracy. Is it a conspiracy? I'm thinking yay. From the fleshly perspective, they do it to make money. Okay, I understand that. From the spiritual perspective, the conspiratorial perspective, what is the goal? Disease, destruction, and death. You say, do you think they're that dark? You go down to Georgia Guidestones, you'll see that the top dogs want the world population to brought down to 500 million. If they don't mean it, why do they advertise it? And one good way, one good way to do it is what we put in our bodies. White sugar is better for the body than high fructose corn syrup. Or now they're trying up fructose. It's about like getting shot by a 22 caliber versus a 90-45 caliber. <laughs> now, if I'm going to shoot, I'm going to take the 22. I mean, 
But high fructose corn syrup affects the liver into fat production or fatty liver, and it contains mercury and high heavy metals. And that's not what the body's intended to have. Personally, when I pick up things up and look at the ingredients, if that's got high fructose corn syrup or fructose, I'm going to put it back on the shelf. Or yellow dye number six or red dye, I forget which one's which. Okay, why? Because I know the intent. The first sin occurred when Eve consumed the forbidden fruit. Okay, second thing. If you would look in Proverbs chapter 23. All I'm saying is just consider. And, you know, I'm just like anybody else. You know, nobody has a perfect diet. Nobody has perfect health. I'm looking forward to heaven where everything is just marvelous. And it, it could be like the older couple that passed away. I mean, they're married for 50-some years, and they passed away. And in heaven, the old man said to her, I would have been up here much sooner if you hadn't gave me those oat bran buns. <laughs> and so that's one way you can look at it, too. <laughs> okay, Proverbs chapter 23 is a very unusual passage. I couldn't figure this out for a while. This is when thou sittest to eat with a ruler. So we're dealing with a big dog. So they're going to have pretty fancy foods. And if you get invited to a meal, he says, consider diligently what's before thee. Okay, so apply that. When you walk into a grocery store, America is very rich. I know it's in debt, but they still got the stuff. Consider diligently what's before thee. Consider it. And then he says, put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given appetite. Why? Why would you do that? It's basically saying, why don't you just take your life now rather than doing it on a slow installment plan? Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not for riches, certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Ooh, Illuminati. All seeing eye of horse. That's what that's aiming at. It's found three times in the Bible. That's where you get in the conspiratorial idea. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. And so forth. All I'm saying is at the end of verse 1, consider diligently what is before thee. Artificial natural flavors, you'll see that all, a lot of times in your in the ingredients. Artificial natural, oh, that's natural. Artificial, oh, natural, oh, it's got to be better, right? What is that artificial flavoring, natural flavoring? There's the chemical companies that take chemicals and make perfume so you cover up the stinky body. They take similar chemicals that can tickle your taste bud and make it taste like a strawberry or a lemon. It's just a chemical. That's all that it is has zero health benefits, and in fact is harmful for the body. But they have to put that on there. Okay, and a care and then the food industry knows that if they have a careful combination of salt, sugar, and fats, those three, that confuses the body into an addiction. Hence they can advertise, can't stop eating them. Why? They're teasing the body with a drug or with the hormones and the salt, sugar, and the person. And the body says, ooh, you got to more, ooh, ooh. And, and your mind is saying, stop it, stop it, stop it. And your body's saying, your hand is saying, keep getting up. Exercise, exercise, yes, sir. We're doing exercises. And, and, we're tricking, and they're tricking our body, and it's a cause of obesity. Sit in front of a store and just watch the people walking in. And go someplace else in the world and see people that don't have the American diet and see what they look like. Vietnam. Been there. Amazing. Now, again, I'm not saying, I'm just saying what this morning is we need to consider, and I'm not saying that we put health above spiritual. If I'm, gonna, if, if I'm with a person, I like to sit, and he wants to take me out to eat, and I want to witness to him. The Bible says in Romans 14, for me, destroy not the work of God. And if he drives into McDonald's, now it'd be probably the first time I've been in one of at least a decade, but if we guys drives into McDonald's and he gets a Big Mac, large fries, and Diet Coke, make sure you get that Diet Coke, 
I'll probably get a Big Mac. I won't get the fries because that's all chemicals. That's why they taste the same throughout the world. It's the same chemicals. And I definitely won't get the Diet Coke because that's aspartame. And that is a great cause for Alzheimer's. And I have a hard enough time remembering my memory pills. And so, but I'm not going to say anything about his diet. I'm going to try to tell him about the Lord Jesus Christ or whatever he wants to discuss. Why? Because the spiritual is much more important than the physical. Okay? And if you would look in Galatians chapter 6. A lot of times we apply this passage for spiritual reasons. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now that is a general rule of life. It not only is a spiritual rule, it is a physical rule. A lot of times people tend to think that and there is a truth about our genetics passing down that my family have this, so I'm going to have that. And that, that is a general rule. But sometimes it's because you're eating the same thing and you have the same outcome. Not always, but I do know that there's something to that. Okay, and so the thing is, is can we, can we reap something better if we put something where our body can absorb and digest better? Now, here's, here's how the Lord looks at this. If you would look one more place, 1 Corinthians 9, and then next week I'm going to just go through seven vital areas for complete health. And I know none of us are going to practice it because we're all, we all got appetites. We all see the advertisements. But at least we're going to work at it, hopefully. And if you don't want to, I don't care. It don't matter. We'll continue our prayer request for sick people on Thursday nights. <laughs> That is the number one prayer request in in churches, is it not? Okay, and sometimes it's a spiritual thing, sometimes it's a physical thing. But 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, I mentioned this on Thursday night. The Lord has crowns that he's going to be given out at the judgment seat of Christ. This is a crown given to people who take responsibility of their body. They try to feed their body what is needed. Okay, and 1 Corinthians 9.24, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but the fat guy don't get the prize. Okay, no. Uh, but one receiveth the prize. Okay, one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Can okay, any athlete that wants to get a gold medal, bronze, silver medal, he's going to be temperate in all things, except the sport he's trying to master. Then he's going to be a fanatic on that sport. So he's got to be careful what he eats, how much he rests, his exercise. He's got to be very precise about these things. Why is he doing it? Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. No parties late at night, and all this stuff is put to a side. But we an incorruptible. And I believe the reason why some of these athletes, after they've won the Super Bowl, they've won the World Series, they get drunk. Why? Because the feeling goes away. And they thought, I thought I'm supposed to be ecstatic. And they are at the beginning part. But then the emptiness, the fans go away. They're by themselves. It wasn't what I thought it was. I'm supposed to be overjoyed happy. I'm just as miserable as everybody else. I'm going to get drunk. But you see, they do it for a corruptible crown, we for an incorruptible crown. Now that's something that's worth having in eternity. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body. That is a very difficult verse to obey. I keep under my body. Grocery line. Paying for your food. I keep under my body. County fair, smell popcorn. Let's go get popcorn. Elephant ears. Do you get the wax with the ears? I keep under my body. That's tough. Chocolate cake. Apple. 
My eyes. Keep under my body. It's tough. Is it not tough? That shows where the flesh is at. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. My mind says to my body, don't do it. It might taste good here, but your gut is going to be hurting. Okay? Lest that by any means when I've preached to others, I myself should be cast away. Again, we want to have a perfect balance about these things, but we want to be accountable, too, to our God. He's given us a body. What do we need to put in it? He has certain things that he said should be put in it. We know that the devil wants to defeat us, destroy us, get us, you know, all these other things. But we also know at times God allows sickness to occur and it's no fault of ours. Why? Because he's got a spiritual goal in mind. And so, uh, incorruptible crown. Basically, just this morning, back in Proverbs 22, verse 2, 1, he says, Consider what's before thee. Consider. Read them ingredients. Analyze it. Now, I'll put one more test. Any mama in here, take a glass of water, take 11 teaspoons of sugar in the water, pump in some coloring and carbon dioxide, and hand that to your child. Any mama in here do that? I just described a Mountain Dew. Only it's not sugar, it's corn syrup probably. And so it's just a matter of how they package it. Oh, that looks good. You see? And again, you know, it says in Romans, for me, destroy not the work of God. That's people's choices. Okay, so let's pray. Lord, I do pray and ask that you'd help us, each and every one of us, to consider diligently what's before us. Help us to make wise choices. Help us not to, say, go to a doctor when we need to. Help us to seek advice in all areas of life. Help us to experiment, study, and experience our own bodies. And recognize what gives us energy, what takes energy. Help us recognize that also spiritual things can affect us physically. And physical things can affect us spiritually. Help us to see and admire the great God that's created each and every one of us. And help us to, whether therefore ye eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're dismissed with that.